Grace and peace in our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. It gives me great joy that I get to announce that as of Friday at 3 o'clock, Bishop Malone has appointed Father Leon Burnett to be the new pastor of St. Gregory the Great Parish. <laughs> Father Leon is coming from Our Lady of Pompeii in Lancaster. He's originally from the Black Rock area of Buffalo, Our Lady, our, the, the Assumption Parish. And I met with Father Leon this week and I shared with him my hopes and my joys about his pastorate here at St. Gregory's, and I promised and pledged to him your prayers, your love, and commitment to St. Greg's and to him. I'd ask you to please keep him and his parish in your prayers. Not only is Our Lady of Pompeii losing their pastor this week, they also were told that their school would be closing. That is a very difficult time for any parish, and we, as their brothers and sisters, offer to not only Father Leon in his transition, but to our brothers and sisters at Our Lady of Pompeii, our prayers and support. It has been my intention for a couple months to preach at all the masses this weekend. But I have to be honest with you, I cannot guarantee that my final homily with you as your pastor will come out the way that I intended. I'm not sure that I'll be able to make all of the connections and share with you everything that resides in my heart. I have no intentions of asking if we have any visitors. I'm not going to tell you so-and-so is here from Columbia, South America. I'm not going to tell any stories. And I'm not going to walk back and forth or pull you out of the pews. I just want my heart to speak to your heart as disciples in Christ Jesus. This would probably be one of the times that I'll be lost for words. But knowing what a shy and reserved person that I am, <laughs> you will understand very clearly I don't want to stand here as your priest, your pastor, and certainly not the president rector of Christ the King Seminary, but I want to stand here as your brother, a disciple, trying to follow what the Lord asks each of us to do. I've known since August that something was in the works. And during the course of August, September, and October, I had to contemplate and to pray about whether or not I was going to respond to the bishop's request. And many of you, and myself included, I asked whether I could say no. No. I couldn't. But not for any of the reasons that you're thinking of. Not because the bishop didn't give me an option, because he did. He gave me a pass. Joe, only you and I will know that we talked about this. It's not because he's persuasive more than others, because he is, but that wasn't the reason. His excitement about what can happen at Christ the King was almost contagious. It's not because I have a degree or because I've done formation before in the past. It's not because the need there is any greater than any other parish or institution in the Diocese of Buffalo. It is something else. It's much bigger than that. The yes that I gave to the bishop wasn't mine. It was yours. And so many other people that have said yes to God in so many different ways. It's big. It's huge. It's bigger than all of us. You know that I went on retreat. I went to Gethsemane, the abbey where Thomas Merton lived. And during that time, I was discerning and thinking about all the possibilities of what I should do. And I began to think of the people around me and the people before. And I thought of Monsignor Valerio Bernardo. 
my first pastor as a kid in my home parish. And one day I showed up at that rectory because I used to lock the church doors. And there was no kitchen furniture, no refrigerator, no living room furniture, and the TV was even gone because he had just given it away to somebody who needed it that day. He didn't ask, he just did it. And he lived on a folding chair and a card table for weeks and weeks. He said yes. I listened and watched seven diocesan priests at Cardinal Manzini High School teach, coach, love, minister, anoint, and I don't think I ever once heard Father Ray Pa, my hero, or any of those priests ever say no, because I think they realized right from the very beginning that it had little to do with them. I had the privilege in Lockport to work with Father Joe Dumfrey, one of the kindest, gentlest priests I have ever known. He never said no. He's an oblate of Francis de Sales. Ask for nothing, refuse nothing. And I watched him day in and day out say yes to whatever God asked of him. I heard stories from you. I heard stories about Monsignor Rupert Wright, that even in the last years, when he had his surgeries, he was up here in a wheelchair offering Eucharist and Mass and committing himself to his priesthood on a very regular basis. He never said no. Even in the last days when it was difficult for him, he never forgot who called him to the priesthood in the first place. I watched Father Sibby, Father Francis, and Father David on a daily basis say yes at 2 o'clock in the morning over in that emergency room for hours comforting people, working endless hours and days on their homilies so they can nourish the people of God here. A resounding yes. Father David traveling late at night to go down to Camp Turner to expose the Blessed Sacrament and hear confession of our teens because that's just what the yes means. Father Sibby standing beside me as a priest and a friend and all of them standing next to me in tough and difficult decisions. When I say it was virtually impossible to say no, it's not just because I was surrounded and have been surrounded by incredible priests because that would be way too easy. My yes was my family, my sister and my brother-in-law, my cousins and my friends. But my yes is also you. The seven o'clock group of people who gather here for Mass, I know I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I like the seven o'clock people better. The teachers, Mrs. Friend, Eric Roy, our school, the catechist, Joan Richmiller, and all of her staff, the coaches and the parents in our schools, the high school students and the college students' adults who knelt down with me and prayed in the dump of Managua, Nicaragua, and prayed for that nation and those people far away from St. Gregory's, they were saying yes again and again. St. Vincent de Paul, underneath the radar, giving food and clothing and furniture. Our memory care respite ministry, who cares for people who can't even remember their name, but gives comfort to those who care for them. The deacons of our parish, their preaching, communion, baptismal classes, their commitment to the parish mission, the adorers of the Eucharist, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, people coming and going, college students at 11 o'clock saying, Father, what's the passcode? How do I get into the adoration chapel? Because they wanted to hear their Jesus say, follow me. And they said yes. Yes. 